there are a lot of different units in the Battle Cats. As of now, there's over 700 different cat units you can deploy, ranging from meat shields, to low cooldown mid-rangers, to long range backliners, tanks, rushers, and more. A lot of these units are well liked by many players of the community. You might be a fan of Balrog's satisfying strength and hits that do hundreds of thousands of damage, or Yukimura's blazing fast speed and damage output. Maybe it's Kronos' reach and freeze ability, or Hades' massive health pool and ability to wall anything. Or your favorite unit could just be a cool or funny design, like Dio Ramos being an awesome looking dragon, or Super Galaxy Cosmos having a ridiculous attack animation. And it doesn't even have to be an Uber. The Bahamut who's helped carry you throughout the entirety of the game, the Can Can who's helped beat up every enemy you've encountered, or just the unkillable rock who makes sure the enemies can't push you. There's a ton of units that people love when it comes to battle cats, and for good reasons. Unfortunately, there are a few units that a lot of players don't have the most positive feelings towards, whether due to controversy or just their inherent mechanics. Courier Cat's introduction of Behemoth Slayer and the Behemoth Subtrait caused lots of controversy for the direction the game was going in. Dark Kazli's sheer power and lack of skillful usage needed, combined with the uber rarity, makes it something to be shunned away by many, not to mention her possible influence on Ponos' game design. And then there's units like Sniper Deadeye, Metal Cat, and Healer, which all cheese tons of hard stages, some of them being boss fights beloved by many, all while being limited and hard to obtain for a lot of players. These units don't have the greatest reputation, but I'd like to discuss one specific unit who's been heavily disliked for years upon years at this point. A unit which people weren't very happy about its power potential compared to a lot of other units in the game. A unit that was more polarizing than Courier or Dazzly, and could be used to cheese tons upon tons of stages. A unit that defined an entire, slow, and cheesy strategy built right around itself. This is Cyberpunk, the most hated unit in the history of the Battle Cats. What is Cyberpunk, you might ask? Well, Cyberpunk is the true form of Nerd Cat, a regular super rare you could roll from the gacha. This true form came out in update 6.8 all the way back on February 1st, 2018. Standing at a massive 1200 range, and hitting from 1200 to 800, he outranges most of the enemies in the game, and can safely attack them from a distance. Although he has very bad survivability, one knockback and low HP, mediocre damage stats, and a very long cooldown, there's one key ability that makes Cyber who he is. Cyber has a 100% chance to slow all enemy types except metal for 2 seconds. This is an extremely powerful ability, as being able to slow down almost any enemy on the field is a strong support on almost every stage in the game. But it gets crazier. With his talents, given on update 8.3 or March 11th, 2019, Cyberpunk gets some major improvements. While lower cost, barrier breaker, and more attack are situational to mediocre, survive gives Cyberpunk an extra life on the field, especially good for a unit with defensive stats as weak as him, and his slow up talent increases the slow duration from 2 to 4 seconds. On a unit that attacks about every 8 seconds, a guaranteed 4 second slow on almost every enemy on the field means that about half the time you're fighting enemies, they are all crippled down to just half a speed, making their pushing power non-existent. This already sounds extremely strong, but there's one more part of the picture on what makes Cyber so strong. Due to his massive blind spot in his range, you can stall small peons inside of there and just wait for another cyberpunk to come off of cooldown. And then once you spawn that one, you can do it again. And again. Once you have multiple, or even tons of cyberpunks on the field, 
they will keep attacking all the enemies left in the stage, and constantly refreshing the slow effect on all of them, essentially guaranteeing victory. This strategy is called Cyberstack, and it's a very infamous strategy. Most strategies revolve around multiple units to work together and defeat various threats in a stage, making the gameplay of many stages in the game very diverse. Cyberstack is the opposite. It's just stacking cyberpunks until the stage beats itself. It can be easy to understand why many players aren't too fond of this strategy. Something that feels this cheesy and overpowered isn't something everyone will like to use, especially when it works almost everywhere. After all, Battle Cats is a strategy game. When you remove that core element of gameplay by using the same strategy on almost every stage, that gets boring fast. Now, it is extreme to simply cyberstack every single stage that you can in the game, and almost no one plays like that. But the simple fact that this strategy exists in the first place causes a lot of stigma towards the unit. Some players hear about this strategy and simply refuse to use Cyberpunk at all because they hate how Cyberstack plays out. And while not every single usage of Cyber is Cyberstack, the correlation between the two can't be undermined. Players would first call Cyberstack as a strategy very lame, then grow an overall negative preference towards the unit itself, regardless if it was used for Cyberstacking or just some other role in a larger strategy. There's also another important aspect of Cyberstacking that makes it particularly disliked by the player base, and it might even be the most important one, speed. Cyberpunk has a cooldown of about 2 minutes and 38 seconds. For every Cyberpunk you add to the battle, that's another 2.5 minutes of stalling, not fighting any threatening enemies or doing anything interesting. Just more time spent building up a large Cyberstack before you even choose to engage the enemies in the first place. With the right units and levels, many stages in the game don't take too long, usually taking about a few minutes to clear. Even with just three cybers on the field, that's already over five minutes of your time just spent stalling and doing nothing, when you could have already beaten the stage. Not to mention the additional time you need to actually push the base and kill everything that comes out of it, cyber stacking is going to take a lot of time to pull off and is going to feel like a real slog. There's even some sort of a sunk cost fallacy at play. If you only have three cybers on the field, there could be a chance that they get closely synced up in attacks and could end up not permanently slowing every enemy on the field. Since you're already 5 minutes into cyber stacking, why not just stall out for a fourth cyberpunk just to be a little safer, and make your victory just a bit more guaranteed? And then the cycle repeats. It could be 4, 5, even 6 or more cybers that you've stalled for depending on the stage and the player. And the more cybers you have on the field, the more you'd want to make sure your victory is guaranteed. Because if you end up losing with 5 cyberpunks on the field, that's a good 11 or more minutes of your time completely wasted. To most people, this cheesy, repetitive, long and mundane process is not worth going for. So they leave Cyberstack as just a last resort if they truly can't beat a stage with anything else. But the result of this is that some stages, like Curry Comet or the Belated Priest, seem unapproachable to most players, resulting in them being forced to use their last resort to beat them. The feeling of being forced into using this strategy gives them a negative view of this unit that is unique to Cyberpunk. While people might hate Courier because of his behemoth controversy, the base unit is still a fun LD rusher, and a lot of people actually do have fun using Courier. The same can even be said for Dark Casley. Sure, it might seem dumb a unit like her exists and is locked away by uber RNG, but people can utilize her power and unique mechanics to have fun destroying stages easily or optimizing dojo scores. Most importantly, both of these units are inherently fast, while Cyberpunk is a slow unit. The time spent on using a unit that you might not like is lower because these units clear stages faster than Cyberpunk does. For all of these reasons, I think it's safe to say that Cyberpunk was the most hated unit in the game.
But the thing is, a lot of people still like Cyberpunk. And a lot of people also still like Courier, Dirk Casley, Sniper Deadeye, Healer, and more. Because in reality, people love using very strong units. Some of the stages in this game can be quite annoying, and having one of these infamous units bail you out of playing what would be a major annoyance can earn them some positive views in return. Let's think about it. The typical Battlecats player is probably someone who uses everything they have, and that includes Ubers. They won't hold back on levels, talents, or anything just to make a fight closer. But we'll just play to win and progress. After all, who wouldn't want to win when it's the point of the game? And even if these units can break stages in dumb ways, or be related to some sort of controversy, the average player won't really care. Well, they might if they see enough people complaining, but that's besides the point. And well, even apart from that, these units still have unique properties or mechanics that do make them interesting or cool in some ways. Let's take another look at Cyberpunk, and instead of explaining why you might dislike him, how about why you might like him? Well, the 1200 standing range and his role as a sniper unit is incredibly unique, especially compared to other non-Uber options. There's basically no other viable non-Uber sniper units in the game besides Cyberpunk, Deadeye, and Annihilation City Collab Geek, with the next unit with the highest range being like Lil Nyandam, who is very far off from these units. And with Cyber as the most accessible of those three, it gives him an identity, and a role to fill. His temporary slow is also unique and makes him not just a special sniper unit, but also a special support unit. His damage can be a nice factor for clearing up hard to reach enemy backliners faster if they are hard to reach, like Professor A, Mana King Dragon and Flying, and even more depending on your lineup. Because of his unique properties, there's a lot of reasons why some people, including myself, actually really like Cyberpunk. While there's tons of mid-ranged attackers to choose from, or generalist backliner ubers to choose from, Cyberpunk is Cyberpunk. While these controversial units do end up having a negative reputation to some people, others are going to really like these units. For every Courier, Dazzly, or Cyberpunk hater, there's probably a respective Courier, Dazzly, or Cyberpunk enjoyer. And you know, Battlecats is a very open game. There's over 700 different cat units, and if you don't want to use a unit, then there's always going to be alternative strategies to win. Maybe these units do have some noticeable flaws in how they operate, but I'm still glad they are in the game. No unit in Battlecats is ever completely required, no matter the stage. And because Cyberpunk is here to stay, I'm gonna keep using him, just because I like him. Thanks for watching.